Hey everyone, my name is Kids Coding and today we're going to be learning about CSS backgrounds. We use the background color property to specify the background color of a specific web page. So that's the first thing we're going to be talking about in backgrounds. Just get it started quick and possible. So first is background color. So we use something called the background color property. So let's say here we did something called background color and then from here we can just pick whatever color we want in this case I'm going to do red and then after that we can just end it there and then from there we can just do style after that then we do a body and then we do whatever text we want and then we end it from there and then we save it. And then from here you see that the background color became red. Um, we can change the text color if we wanted to make it better. So like we can do white. And then because we might not be able to see it boldly, I can add a little bit of a bold. Like that. So now you can see that it's seen legibly and clearly. That was just a little adjustment I made so that I could see it. From there, we can then um, change it up a little bit. So like, let's say um, I wanted a different background for each element. So I can make H1 something, and then um, I make paragraph something. Like, let's say we do this one as purple. And then finally we can just do a heading two. And then we can do that. And then we can make this like sign or something. And then we can just end it there. And then from here we can just do our regular HTML. Okay, and then I think from there we are pretty much good to go. And then from here you see that um, the background color pretty much has changed based on what we requested. So that was pretty much something um, cool that you can do. You can mix it up or you can just stick with one. But they were different sizes because of the elements. I did heading one, heading one's the biggest, heading two in paragraphs. So that's part of HTML. We can then use something called opacity to, um, it specifies how opaque we want the color to be. This is pretty much in other words, transparency which is from a range of zero to one. The closer to zero, the more transparent it becomes, the more lighter it becomes. The closer to one, the more of its full color that it will come, or also known as the less transparent it will become. So if I did something like, um, let's say I did that and then, what's a good one? Let's say opacity. And then let's say we make that like 0.4. Remember that it's going to be from zero to one. Zero being completely light where you can't see the color at all. And one, you can see the color, the full color. So let's say we do about 0.4. And then let's get rid of this. You can see that part of the color is still visible, but not all of it is there. If we keep increasing, then the color will um, start to slowly show up until we get to one, where we can see the full color. One, where we can see the full color, and then zero, where it will just be pure white. We can also do something called the RGBA values. This is another way that we can do the opacity. I covered this on another video. I'm not completely strong on it. So if you wanna check that, I will be on the top right hand corner. I'll scroll all the way to about the end of the video, close to the end. I cover it there. So yeah, 
but I prefer to personally do it this way. You don't have to do it that way, but if you're familiar with it and you're used to it, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Next, we don't really have to do our background image as a, uh, our background as a color. We can do it as an image instead. In this case, we're gonna have to do something called the background image property. From here, we will then need to find an image on Chrome or whatever web browser. So like, let's say we find our image. And then from here, we find whatever image we want. We save it to our computer by right clicking, save image as, and then click wherever you want to save it and then hit the save and it will show on the bottom. Then we go back to our code editor. In my case, it's notepad. And then we go here. And then we, you have to follow the specific syntax because that is how we're supposed to be able to put an image. I don't know exactly if you can do it the HTML way, like when you can do image source in that, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do a little bit of a different syntax. So let's say I did URL and then in parentheses and in quotes, I would do the name of the image. Dot, um, I think it was a JPEG. And then from there, we can save it. And then as you see from here, and then we reload. Okay, I'm gonna check on something. Okay, let's see, let's see if I made this body. That would probably help solve it. Yep, that did. So as you can see, the background image showed. Um, but we can still not see the text. Make sure your background image can is good so that it can be legibly read with the text. In my case, that's not it's not like that. So we need to change the text color. So we'll use the color property and then change it to whatever we want. Keep in mind that you do not have to use the color name. You can also use the other ones I mentioned, like HSL, RGB, and HEX values. I just prefer to use the color name because I don't want to just waste time and remember all that kind of stuff when you can just simply do it this way. And then from there, um, I'm just going to save that and reload it. It's going to show, but I, but if I did like a paragraph instead, you wouldn't really be able to see it properly. Like you like, it would kind of like be there. So that is where the bold tag comes in. So I'm just going to add a little bit of some boldness. And then from there you see, yeah, I think I was doing XHTML, my bad. Okay, that should work. Yep, and as you see, it got older. Just a little bit extra thing I wanted to add just so that it could legibly read. So if you do do a background image, make sure it's legibly read with the text. If not, change the color so that you could still read the text. Um, then, um, we have something a little bit different where the background image might not be able to display on the whole page. So um, I think I have something saved on my hmm? Yeah, it was unnamed. So um, unnamed.png. So from there, I'm just going to pretty much save it and then I'm going to reload and show you what happens. If I can, I'll probably, um, that works. Okay, um, let's see. Background image, oh, unnamed. Okay, that's why. Now let's try it. And as you see, the image is, is kind of like a little bit weird. Like, you know, I'm talking about like, um, like it just keeps like repeating or like, it just like keeps on like duplicating itself. We can prevent this from happening by doing something called the background repeat property. So um, when we add the background repeat property, it pretty much prevents this duplication from happening. So like um, I can do repeat X. Now here's where the case is different. It depends on your scenario. Since mine is repeating horizontally like this, I'm going to use repeat X. If it's repeating vertically, like it's repeating, 
like the image is duplicating itself um, vertically, then that will be repeat with the Y at the end, not with an X. So once again, if it repeats horizontally, it's going to have an X at the end. If it repeats in a vertical way, then it's going to have a Y at the end. But in my case, I'm just going to do it with an X at the end. And then from there, I think we are good to go. So let's save it and then reload. And as you see, the image hasn't duplicated itself. It doesn't duplicate itself and you can still properly see it. So that's the cool thing about that. The no repeat value pretty much um, shows the background image only once. Most of the time this disturbs the reader, but other times it doesn't. So um, let's say I did no repeat. I believe is what I could do. Yeah, you can still see the image. It repeats only once. It doesn't duplicate, but it just, like you see here, it's cut off. We can even change the position of the image. Um, by using the background position property. So if I used position, and then I did, um, let's say I did top right. So your position is pretty much top right, bottom left, top right, bottom left, etc. whatever you want. I'm doing top right in this case. And what it will do is that it will just produce it at the top right hand corner. That's what it did, but for some reason there's yeah, but anyway, that's how that works. I'm gonna do something a little bit different though. So here I pretty much did something a little bit different and I just brought a still image, not like a gradient color or something like that. So the result came out like this and it's just a simple image. So what the no repeat pretty much did is that it showed the image only one time. It didn't repeat. If I got rid of it though, then this would happen and we wouldn't want that. So that is why we add the no repeat. So I hope you saw the difference from there. And that is kind of a good reason why we should put the no repeat like that. We then have something called the background attachment image property. What this does is that um, we have two values for this. By the way, this right here is a property and this right here is the value for any, um, set for, that's how the syntax is for CSS selectors. I just wanna get that rid of. So our property is pretty much background um, attachment. And then we either have two values. We have the fixed or we have the scrolled, scroll. So let me demonstrate both of them. And let me, copy this and then paste into my other notepad that I created in my last video. So let's save that and then let's save this one. Now let me go open my second orders. Let me go back here. Let me add the no repeat there and I think we're good to go. So then we need to add the scroll. So let me just copy and paste this a couple times to show y'all. There, that should work. So as you see, when we scroll down, it's a fixed image, so it will stay there. So when we scroll down, we can still see the image. But if I change the value to scroll, you will then see that the opposite happens. And when we scroll down, that you can no longer see the image. So yeah, that was just something to quickly point out. Fixed fixes the image in place, and um, it won't move when you scroll down. So you can see that whenever you scroll down, you can still see the image, and it's perfectly still. So even when you scroll down, you can see it. Whereas when you use the scroll value, then it's simply going to move the image out of place. And when you scroll down, the image will go back up and you won't be able to see it. So that's pretty much the two values for your background attachment property. Finally, we can then do something called the shorthand property. Um, this is just simply um, 
a quicker and easy way so instead of having to do what we previously did right here which is background repeat background attachment background position background image we can just combine these all into background so let me um copy this and then let's do background and then you can simply see that Okay, and then let's save it from there. And then you can still see it does the same thing, but it's just way easier to put them all in as background instead of having to do them separately. Just a shorter way, that's why it's called the shorthand property. And that is pretty much it with this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. It will be greatly appreciated. Follow my socials, link in the description. Visit my website, also in the description. Um, also, click on your left will be a full playlist of my CSS videos. In the middle, you'll see my clip profile picture where you can hover your mouse to subscribe if you haven't already. Lastly, on my right is an HTML playlist where um, you can just pretty much watch another playlist and it is a little bit tied to CSS. You'll need to know about HTML. But anyways, on a good note, I'm going to end it here. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time.